Good morning. Today's topic is pulmonary tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is one of the top ten causes of death and leading to um, death due to leading cause of death due to single infectious agent in the world. It bears disproportionately large burden of world's TB cases and it is the biggest health problem in India. Incidence of TB in India is about 27 lakhs in 2019. About 95 percent of total cases of uh, tuberculosis are in uh, developing countries. In 2018, the new cases, the uh, largest number of new cases, 44% are from Southeast Asia, and 24% from African region, and 18% from West Pacific Asia. TB mostly affects adults in their most productive uh, years, and about one quarter of the world's population has latent TB. That is, they have been infected by bacteria, but not yet developed the disease and cannot transmit it. Causative is in Tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, which most often affects the lungs. It is curable and preventable, and it spreads from person to person through air. How it transmits? Transmission of infection is respiratory manuals like cough, spitting, sneezing, and singing generate small respiratory droplets, which on evaporation develop droplet nuclei. These droplet nuclei suspended in the throughout the space without settling in the organisms that they contain can remain viable for extended period of time, hence they cause no transmission. Pathology. Tuberculosis is known to mankind since Vedic times. It was known for its good prognosis and the pathology essentially results from interplay of uh, bacillus with host immunity. The classification of tuberculosis. Based on the sequence of events, class, uh, tuberculosis can be divided into primary, proxy, and post-primary. Primary degree is disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis in a person where there is no previous exposure. Initial exposure will produce primary TB. Primary TB, which generally is self limiting, when it progresses, it gives way to large regions and that is progressive primary TB. And in some cases where the disease is self limiting, so it disappears and after uh, some time, because of the endogenous reactivation, patient develops TB again, and that is post-primary tuberculosis. Based on location, TB is divided into pulmonary TB, extrapulmonary TB, and disseminated TB. Pulmonary TB is TB in the lung, extrapulmonary is lesions that are present outside the lung, and disseminated TB means tuberculosis disease process involving more than two non contiguous sites. Primary TB. Once uh, occurs in a person exposed for the first time in the, to the mycobacterium, it is highly endemic in high endemic areas, it is in the children, and in, uh, where there is substantial TB control, uh, adults can get primary TB. Progressive pulmonary TB, progressive primary TB, because of inadequate immunity due to loss of acquired immunity or due to some specific immunity deficiency, primary TB usually services self limiting may develop into large regions, that is, progressive TB. This is mostly seen in infants and, and adolescents and elderly. Post-primary TB is a disease generally occurring in adults who develop acquired immunity to the TB through endogenous reactivation or can be due to exogenous reinfection. This is a astrophysical pathological appearance of TB vaccine. There is a granuloma in the infected tissue. Pathogenesis. Lungs predominantly involved by mycobacterial infection and conditions that increase the risk of TB include immunodeficiencies. Immunodeficiency disease, diseases like the HIV infection or immunosuppressant uh, therapy or like chronic steroid intake as the case of urban uh, transplantations, immunomodulator drugs, malignancies, silicosis, other comorbidities like the diabetes and the CKD, tobacco smoking, IV drug infusions, and connective tissue disorders are the risk factors for to develop tuberculosis. So, what is a primary TB? The earliest foundation of primary TB is actually laid by Mary Jules Parrot in 1876. Parrot's last states that primary TB includes prominent lymphoma involvement. Primary TB comprises a unit called primary complex, which include primary parenchymal lesion, but in a respect of the organ and the infected draining tube. This complex is known as primary complex of rank A. The primary complex that is present in the lung is termed as bones complex. Bones complex include bones focus and tracheobronchial nucleus. 
the Lone's form caucasus, the caucus of primary infection in lung, which is subplural sub and is located in the middle portion of the lung, that is upper part of the lower lobe or lower part of the middle lobe, and that is on the right side. Presence of enlarged retrobronchial lymph nodes with relatively smaller primary caucus is suggestive of primary TB. Hyalinization and calcification is a routine for primary caucus and microscopic calcification occurs as early as two months after disease and radiologically it appears after one year. And calcification does not mean it is sterile. Probosy TB. National history of disease is influenced by immunity, immunity status, yes, mycobacterial virulence and infective infection dose. In the past few, few years, there is susceptibility to malaria TB or TB meningitis. Segmental lesion or epituberculosis is an early is equal in infants and in a minority of adolescents. Fuel effusion is seen as a sequel of primary disease and progress to post primary is likely in primary, primary infection is in the young adulthood, young adulthood than in childhood. Early dissemination in, is common in primary tuberculosis and some ways of spreading to infection include direct extension into the adjacent tissue, lymphatics, through lymphatics, endobronchial and vascular lymphatics, implantation of vascular in the mucosa of upper airways resulting in laryngeal TB, middle ear TB or oral TB, swelling of infectious sputum can lead to GI TB, Early dissemination is common in primary disease and some ways of spread of infection include direct extension into the adjacent tissue, lymphatic spread through endobronchial and vascular region, implantation of vascular in the mucosa of upper airways resulting in laryngeal TB, middle TB and RN TB, valence of infected sputum can lead to GI TB and regional lymph nodes from regional influence, vascular can spread to pleura, spine, and other viscera, and hematogenous dissemination can occur through parasitic after lymph node environment or direct extension of lesion into the branches of pulmonary veins. These spread may not lead to a concurrent disease. That means dissemination can occur but in the primary stage of the disease, but it may not lead to any concurrent disease in these organs. Post primary pulmonary tuberculosis. In contrast to primary TB, a site of infection majorly is the apical and subacal apical segments of the lung bilaterally. As you see, we have seen in primary TB, the effect the site of infection is in the middle portion of the lung, that is upper part of the lower lobe or lower part, mid, lower part of the middle lobe. But in contrast to primary, post primary is Apical and subical segments of the lung bilaterally are involved. 
This is due to relatively high oxygen tension in this part of the lung, explained by the high ventilation perfusion ratio in the apical parts of the lung and upper upright position. Higher oxygen tension impedes the macrophage function and helps promoting the intracellular growth of the bacteria. These cases represent the presence of uh, dormant cells, dormant bacilli, years or decades after the primary infection. These seeding of these areas are occurred during primary macrobacillinemia, as in primary disease. Now they got activated, and this is called endogenous pathogen uh, pathway of reinfection. Reinfection by exogenous pathway also can occur when it is uh, spread from index case of the primary TB. Pathologically, post-primary TB progresses from apical or subapical 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 urinary to nodal regions, and from there to fibrocytosis series. So three stages: pneumonia stage, nodular stage, and fibrocytosis stage. So nodular regions are known as coin regions or tuberculomas. Are well-defined areas of TB with surrounding parenchyma being normal or scarred. It comprises well-defined granulomas with varying amount of internal calcination according to the size of lesion. Fibrofaceous lesions are characterized by liquefaction, aciation, necrosis, and fibrosis with retraction in the surrounding parenchyma and also through the epithelium. Most characteristic feature is the presence of cavities in post-primary. That is, post-primary generally we see cavities. Which are a result of proxy caseation. Environment of lymph nodes is slight as compared to primary TB. Cavities may or may not communicate with the bronchi. If they communicate, they will produce cavernous breathing. That's all. Some of the conclusion. Caseation is often the walls by joining the primary artery, leading to diastasis and mutism. And smaller cavities may heal, healing lead to fibrosis and cicatrization. Whereas in primary TB, healing leads to calcification. Here, we, in post primary cases, healing leads to fibrosis and cicatrization of hilum in effects, causing volume loss and pulling the hilum upwards. Modern treatment, however, allows rapid closure of cavities, which leads to little evidence of cases. So, this is the flow chart showing primary infection developing primary complex with parenchymal lymphoid lesions. This may heal by Self, this self-limiting. It may it heal by itself with non-viable organisms. Develop scar and calcifications. Mm, sometimes this uh, primary complex may cause the dormant organisms in latent latent regions. Dormant organisms grow because of the spread. It may be in the pulmonary and extrapulmonary areas also. These dormant regions or dormant organisms later get reactivated when there is immune deficiency. And then the post primary TB. And this post primary TB shows cavitation, calcination, mainly, and scarring. In primary complex, if there is some. Sorry for the disturbance. So, primary complex in a heal by itself or can be a latent inflammation. So, sorry for the disturbance. So, primary infection goes to primary complex by marrying combination and movement. If the environment leads to healing, it can heal, but to become more dormant, it may form native regions which later deactivate the body. Those family tuberculosis, or it may progress when there is a low, low immunity to the mutagenic spread, um, causing mutagenic spread, malaria TB, and that progress to cavitation. So, what is malaria tuberculosis? Hematogenic spread of bacillus throughout the lungs, in this malaria TB will be developed. It gets the name due to radiological evidence of small nodules diffusely spread throughout the lung parenchyma, resembling, resembling millets. And the, it, the patient will have present with two, three weeks of fever, night stress, anorexia, weight loss, and dry cough. 
there can be plus pain in the enemy. Headache also may present when there is coexistence to the cleft meningitis. Auscultation frequently is normal, but sometimes they may have some widespread that is in advanced state. In fundoscopy shows toroidal tuberculosis. In X-ray shows fine one to two millimeter lesions, which are millet seed-like, distributed throughout the lungs. This is the X-ray that is showing millet tuberculosis. Millet tuberculosis. This is how the reticular nodular pattern is being seen throughout the lungs. See, these are the millet tuberculosis X-rays. Now. So what is the natural history of untreated, untreated primary tuberculosis? So there will be a parenchymal lesion and a leukemia enlargement. Leukemia enlargement will be larger than the primary lesion, parenchymal lesion. So the, this is primary complex. And tuberculin test becomes positive. Minority of these tests cause some tuberculin illness or edema. This may progress to la larger lesions. If there is less immunity, pulmonary and meningeal tuberculosis occur in children under five years of age due to spread of disease to the meninges and the lung throughout. Pulmonary effusion is rare in chest and children, and usually it occurs within one year of the primary infection. In adults, post primary disease generally produces apical tuberculosis with cavity. This is apical tuberculosis with cavity, this is post primary. And the skeletal lesions and this uh, post primary lesions generally takes one to five, one to five years later after the primary infection. And genetic urinary and skin uh, tuberculosis or late manifestations occur after five to 15 years. So what is immunology in TB? In first place, alveolar macrophages are affected, infected by the vaccine. And these alveolar macrophages, when they get infected, there will be recruitment of polymorphic leukocytes in the site, and these recruitment also includes monocytes, in which contain, contain the bacilli within the site. And then, slowly in third phase, there will be granuloma formation with T cell recruitment and dense cell formation, resulting in killing of bacilli and localization of the bacilli. And uh, if the patient is having defective granulomatous formation. Food enters into fourth case, leading to respect of disease to other organs in the body. So, what is how we diagnose the tuberculosis? Microscopic demonstration of bacilli has been mainstay in diagnosis of tuberculosis. In pulmonary TB, sputum is the specimen of choice. How to collect and transfer the sputum is very, very important. Sputum should be collected in a wide mouth, sterile, transparent, screw cap, easily labeled, and rigid container of approximately 25 ml volume. So, should be very specific. So, in a wide mouth, sterile, transparent, screw cap, easily labeled, rigid container of about 25 ml of volume. A specimen should be collected in an open space away from the people, other people. Two specimens should be collected. One is spot specimen, the other is early morning specimen. Specimens should be transported as soon as it collected, and if delayed, it should be stored in a refrigerator. FOB, that is fibrooptic bronchoscopy, is used to collect bronchioalveolar larvas or bronchial washings or brushings in case of severe negative pulmonary tuberculosis or in persons producing inadequate sodium. A gastric lavas is used. In diagnosing pulmonary TB in children instead of sputum. Demonstration of microbacteria by staining methods. Generally, normally we use gel analysis technique for the microbacterium staining. Microbacterium being gram positive takes a stain and being, because it is acid fast, it retains its, uh, its stain even after administration of acid alcohol and probably pursue is used to highlight the acid fast bacillus. The other techniques that are used are percentage staining and wet pops method. So how to give a report? To say negative, we have to examine at least 100 oil immersion fields. So in a slide, after staining with gel analysis technique, 
we have to examine hundred oil immersion pills before saying negative. If there are no AFB in hundred oil immersion pills, we should say it is negative. If the a number of AFB is between one to nine per hundred oil immersion pills, we should say scan T and we should give exact number of basin shown. And in 10 to 9, 19, if they are 10 to 99 per 100 oil immersion pills, then we have to say 1% is 100 oil immersion pills. If we see less than 100 AFB, then we should say it is 1%. If each oil immersion field is showing one, at least one AFB, we should say it is 2, two plus. And if each immersion field, oil immersion field is showing more than 10, passive A, then we have to say it is 3 plus. So isolation by culture. Culture detects an even less number of passive A, so increase the, the diagnosis of tuberculosis. In addition to this, they establish the viability and adequacy of the organisms also. Culture methods are expensive and generation time of mycobacterium is 18 to 24 days, hence it's not used to deal with. Similarly, the table shows the media that are used for the microbacterial culture. Solid media are present and liquid media are also present. General solid media that is used is LJ media and liquid media are used for testing drug sensitivity. So for DST, drug sensitive testing, we generally use liquid media. Then immunodiagnosis. Immunodiagnostics have major role in uh, tuberculosis diagnosis. It based on humoral and mineral immune response and cell immediate immune response. Similarly, immune response based tests include ELISA and rapid tests. Simply use it to detect active TB. And they produce highly inconsistent and inaccurate results, hence, it's not recommended. Cell immediate response based tests are IZRs, that is, interferon gamma releases. They are highly specific for latent TB infections. But they cannot differentiate between latent TB and active TB. Hence, not of much use in endemic areas. They are used only to detect latent TB in the in countries where there is less incidence of tuberculosis. Nucleic acid amplification tests. Nucleic acid amplification tests for the MAIT. It is very successful, useful adjunct in diagnosis of tuberculosis. These assays amplify, amplify the specific antibacterial tuberculosis amino acid sequences using a probe. They require even less bacilli, that is even 10 bacilli can be detected in even NAAT, that is nucleic acid amplification test. Whereas per smear, we have to, we need at least 5,000 to 10,000 bacilli to, offer to detect positivity and then culture we can detect up to 10 to 100 bacilli. Nucleic acid amplification tests are highly specific for mycobacterium tuberculosis and they are useful in smear negative tuberculosis cases. In some cases where there is AFB, smear for AFB is positive, that means AFB staining by G. Nielsen study is positive. If the, if we send the putum for CD mag, it may become negative, it may show negative, means it is the AFB that are present in the smear may not be mycobacterium tuberculosis. The atypical mycobacteria also pass AFB smear positive, but nucleic acid amplification tests are very specific that they can diagnose only mycobacterium tuberculosis. So, atypical mycobacteria can be ruled out. There are also SSSS are also in now very used. The assays are now in use, which are not only detect this test, uh, diagnose the disease, but also helps to identify the drug sensitivity of INS and INH and rifampicin. So in areas where there is drug resistant TB on rice, this test is on one of the routine investigations that we do for rapid results. So other biomechan biochemical markers are ADNOS and DNAs. This is particularly specific for tuberculosis and erythrocyte infusion. Interferon gamma cell mediated mediated uh, cell mediated response created by TB infection. Interferon gamma leads to release of interferon gamma, and uh, this is useful in diagnosing latent tuberculosis. So, what is Montrose test? 
that it is until test is based on the fact that infection by mycobacterium tuberculosis produces sensitive to certain uh, compounds which are chemical extracts called tuberculins. Tuberculins or uh, PPD of tuberculins are produced in useless sensitin. Different compositions of these sensitin are produced over years and the seed load of this PPD is preserved in BCC vaccine laboratory HNI and are used as a standard in India. It is reconstituted in isotonic buffer solution available as ready to use preparation in 5 ml vials and over 0.1 ml that is coming to 1 tubercular unit. In 1 tubercular unit of uh, PPD with 0.1 ml of diluent of uh, PIN18 is used as a standard dose for intradermal testing. Tuberculin vials should be stored in 2 to 8 degree, degree centigrade and is used before expiry date. 0.1 ml of tuberculin is injected intradermally and slowly for testing. The satisfactory test should raise a flat, pale, P-sized wheel with clear pits of hair follicles and a well demarcated border without any leakage of sugar. So, what is the immunological basis? Individual infected with your mycobacterium tuberculosis respond with delayed type of hypersensitivity to TST. Injection of sugar clean medicine relates to migration of proliferation of sensitized T cells and leukocytes to the test site. Due to release of cytokines and chemokines, an inflammatory response will ensue and developing the incubation in this site. This similar response is also seen with patients with BCC vaccination. Reading the test. Test results are read between 48 to 96 hours after the testing. It should be done in a good daylight and uh, with forearm flex position and should be, we should carefully palpate the side by finger to know the size of induration. Once the induration is palpated, then transverse border of induration is measured in millimeters. The erythema of the test site extends beyond the induration and is not considered for interpretation of the test results. This is the erythema and this is the induration. So erythema is not considered for test result. So, size of induration is more than 50 mm. How to reinterpret it the test? So, size of induration is if it is more than 15 and above, it is significant tubercular infection, irrespective of vaccination status. Similarly, if the size of induration is less than 5 mm, it indicates absence of any mycobacterium infection except there is when there is grave, grave or severe degree of immunization. In middle way, 10 to 14 meters of induration, millimeters of induration can be attributed to either cross sensitivity to other non-mycobacterium uh, bacteria or BCC vaccination or infection with bacteria. In case of induration of less than 5, 5 to 9 millimeters, Majority of these are attributed to environmental mycobacteria or this is the exception. It can be infection if there is immunosuppressions. No. So this is the lab tests that are done. So what is latent TB? Infection with mycobacterium tuberculosis contained in the human contained by human immune, host immune response differences and this is called latent TB. Due to risk of progression of latent TB to active disease, active search of uh, latent TB and treatment is done in low extent countries. That is in endemic countries it is not required. Until recently TST was the only test, now it is IGRP. IGRP interferon gamma radiases are used specifically for the latent TB test. Clinical presentation of pulmonary tuberculosis. Pulmonary tuberculosis is a disease of protein in manifestations and will mimic many diseases. It may present with constitutional symptoms and respiratory symptoms. Constitutional symptoms include fever, which is of low grade in afternoon in or evening rise of temperatures, and weight loss, which is grass and the patient will have become cataclysmic. Night sweats, tiredness, and loss of appetite will be there. Pneumonia will be seen in the severe cases. Respiratory symptoms include cough, 
symptom, hemoplasis, chest pain, and breathlessness. All five respiratory symptoms may present with tuberculosis. Soft will last for three to four weeks, and may be dry or may be productive. Sputum may be scanty, or can be mucoid, mucoperidin, or blood tins. Hemoplasis, hemoplasis, tuberculosis is the most common cause of hemoplasis in India. Just when dull ache or uh, acute cases of pleurisy uh, or pneumothorax. Breathlessness depending on the disease, extension of the disease. Physical signs, tuberculosis in lung can present in different types of disease process like consolidation, cavitation, fibrocaceous lesions, etc. So, variable signs will be present according to the presentation. So, what is X-ray findings? Active TB can present as air space nodules or clusters nodules in the upper or mid zones. A consolidation of upper or mid zone with insulated liquid enlargement can be a medirate tube nodules, can be a thick wall cavity, can be a cavity with surrounding consolidation, unilateral hilar or paratrical liquid enlargements or effusion or amplement. All these are seen, any of them can be suspected of tuberculosis. So these are the extras that we can see. This is the upper zone consolidation, right upper zone consolidation present. Tuberculosis presenting with consolidation with prominent right eye. And this is air, multiple air, air space called sense in the right upper zone. And this is millary tuberculosis with several reticular nodules, particularly in the basal region. This is the millary tuberculosis. And this is a cavity with consolidation in the left upper zone. Scattered nodules of uh, tuberculosis are seen in there. This is insisted effusion. Insisted effusion with A space nodules in the both lungs. This is another consolidating um, part in the right left of region in the left of the zone. And these are the A space nodules in the right of the zone. This is how the respiratory x rays can be, uh, so chest x rays can be made in tuberculosis. So what are the sequelae and the complications of terminal tuberculosis? What is sequelae? Sequelae are resistive effects that occur after acute phase or initial phase of illness and can appear early in the development of disease or can appear later in weeks or after weeks or months. It is mainly result of initial injury or illness. Complication is an unfavorable result of a disease. So, Parenchymal sequelae include the tubercloma, the thin wall cavity, cicatrization, and stage lung destruction. As per airway lesions include bronchite cases, or tracheobronchial stenosis, bronchiolithiosis. So, as per lesions include pulmonary, bronchial artery rates, thrombosis, or resmosis in medicine. Mediastinal lesions include neutron calcifications, extra nodal extensions, esophageal bronchial fistulas. Coral lesions are chronic amphibia, pneumothorax, hypothorax, or BPA. And just one lesions include tuberculosis, tuberculosis, polyitis, and malignant. Complications, hemoptosis, asphyxial losses, and post TB germ body cases are most common. Hemoptosis occurs while the patient is having the active TB or after the fibrosis of tissues. Also, fibrosis of uh, lung tissue also sometimes after some uh, when the artery gets disturbed, you will get hemoptosis. Uh, similarly, as a result of in, uh, in district destroyed lung, there is opportunity to infect the fungal infection of course, and as a result of the lung. And post TB to bronchial cases, fibrosis causes retraction of the retraction of the bronchial and causes bronchial cases, retraction of bronchial cases. Then, Endobronchitis, tracheitis, continuous pneumothorax, calcification, scar, calcium, and chronic respiratory failure are all complications for pulmonary tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, this is uh, treatment is very, very important in tuberculosis because the major health burden in, the, in India, tuberculosis is very much important treatment for tuberculosis. Short course chemotherapy is widely accepted uh, treatment regimen for tuberculosis. It includes six months regimen, which is two, with two phases initial intensive or bactericidal phase, and second, in continuation or sterilization. Intensive phase, which as, as the name 
ियन Recently, government of India changed our NTCP to NTEP, that is National Tuberculosis Eradication Program. So, anti-tubercular drugs that are uh, used for drug sense to permit to be are four. That is, that is that are first-line drugs: sugar, INS, rifampicin, paracetamol, and tamiflu. The doses doses are like INS is five milligrams per kg, rifampicin is ten milligrams per kg, paracetamol is ten to fifteen milligrams per kg. And the third beta is 25 to 25 milligrams per dose. So, what is the regimen that I have followed for a drug sensitive primary tuberculosis? Is two HRZ plus four HRD. That means two months of all four drugs followed by four months of only three drugs. Paracetamol not is not included in continuation phase. When there is, a, it is a, in government. Uh, supply of to uh, buy ATT, there will be a pills so in schedule nine drugs or pills are present which are with fixed dose combination which can each pill contains the famsin two fifty milligrams, isinez one hundred fifty milligrams, paracetamol four hundred milligrams, and ethambutal two fifty milligrams. So these all drugs are included in one pill. In case of uh, continuation phase. This pill, uh, the schedule ten uh, pill is used in which paracetamol is not present. Only HRV are present. The drug doses are the same. And according to the weight of the patient, we have to give the number of uh, amount of drug that have to be given. So according to weight band, by twenty five to thirty four weight, we have to give two pills. Similarly, thirty five to forty nine, we have to give three pills. Fifty to sixty-four, four; sixty-five to seventy-five, five; and above seventy-five, six pills should be given for the patient. The side effects of ATT: rifampicin, INH, and paracetamol. All three are causing having liver toxicity. This hepatitis is is a side effect for all the three drugs. Ethan Vital has only optic um, side effect. INS, INS, INS also causes peripheral neuropathy because of per paradox deficiency. That's why we have to supplement paradox along with ATT. And paracetamol may produce arthralgia due to hyperuricemia. Once we withdraw the paracetamol, this will automatically disappear. Hence. Patients receiving ATP should be monitored regularly for these side effects, and also whether they are taking regularly a treatment, regular treatment or not. LFT is must for all follow-up cases to assess the liver functions. A regular monitoring also helps ensure the patient complete their treatment and to manage early manage early identification and management of the drug reactions. And patients also need to have their weight checked. Every month, and when the weight changes, drug doses may have to be adjusted according to the weight band. So, in adult TB patients, if weight is eight increases or decreases by five kg, uh, compared to baseline weight, then that may cross the pancreatic weight band during the course of the period. Then we have the weight band must be changed at the time next of next trip issue, not immediately. But in case of pediatric patients. If the weight band changes, it should be changed immediately. Actual weight, the ship's uh, weight band should be, the doses should be changed immediately according to the change of weight. Treatment uh, failure. What is treatment failure? Patients whose sputum culture remains positive even after four months of drug treatment is called treatment failure. So, what are the causes for treatment failure? Doctors can be a cause of treatment failure because of inappropriate guidelines they know or non-compliance with the guidelines. 
with the drugs as a cast, drugs can be poor quality or a regular supply of drugs in government or wrong delivery of drugs in those combinations or can be due to drug resistance. And patients are the main cause for their treatment failure. That is because of lack of information, lack of money for treatment or transport, or actual or presumed side effects will cause the patient to stop the drugs, or lack of commitment, or malabsorption or social barriers. And these are the causes for treatment failure. Then relapse. What is relapse? Relapse if they become, remain, they become and remain culture negative while in treatment and become culture positive again after finishing the treatment is they say if their patient is said to be having relapse. Recurrence. Recurrence of active TB is usually used to refer to the situation when person's first TB treatment is completely successful. There has been significant time interval between before active TB develops again. And this can be due to reactivation of the government vasculars or can be readmission. All previously treated patients of pulmonary or extra pulmonary conditions should be started with Standard first hand resume of two HRZD and two HRD. When they were as, well, as soon as they diagnosed with tuberculosis. Drug resistant TB. So the tuberculosis strains with drug resistance are far more difficult to treat than the drug susceptible ones. What is MDR TB and the basically are resistant to action by both Adifampsin and IMS, we call it as MDR. Routinely, we investigate on a primary basis for rifampicin, as in CV9. And uh, CV9 will call, uh, tell us whether the patient uh, sputum is positive for bacterium and also whether the bacterium is resistant to rifampicin or not. So, if the patient is having rifampicin resistance with CV9, it is considered as MDR only without testing as well as the sensitivity. What is XTRTB and the basically are resistant to action by quinolones along with rifampicin and IMS or at least one of the second line uh, injectables like cannabis and emicacin and or capitalizin will call extensive that resistant sugar process. CVMAT or cartridge-based nucleic acid amplification test is automated cartridge-based molecular technique which not only detects a bacteria in sugar process, but also becomes in resistance within two hours. The expert MTB detects the RDNA sequence specific for bacteria in sugar process and becomes in resistance by PCR. It is based on secret genes and gene expert system, a rapid, simple to use nucleic acid activation test. So MDR TB resident, how to put the MDR TB resident? If CVNR shows becomes in resistance, or if LPA is showing INS resistance, or if it if patient is not improving yet with first line drugs, then we should go for DST, drug susceptibility test for individual drugs both in first line and second line antitrobic methods to form a proper effective MDR resume. So why, where do we go for the MDR resumes? The patient receiving that is showing the function resistance, or if there is any LPA showing INS resistance. And PA is then progress during INS resistance. Or if the patient is not responding or not improving with the assigned drugs, we should go to DST and thus appropriately we should put an effective MDR resident. So, what are the second line drugs that are used in tuberculosis? The second line drugs of tuberculosis are divided into group A, B, and C. Group A include three LLB, that is tubofloxacin, renalazanide, and vidaclone. Have to remember with MLB, tuberculosis, lenalidomide, and bedaquilin. And group B include only C, that is clofazamine and cyclosporine. And group C include ethamidal, delaminide, paracetamide, erupmerophenum, mepenum, emicacin, ethianamide, and protheanamide. The composition of MDR TB resumes. In MDR or RRTB patients, and longer resumes, all three group A patients, that is LLB, at least one group B agent, that is C, should be included to ensure that treatment starts with at least four TB agents. 
likely to be effective and that at least three agents are included and the rest of the treatment runs the pilecrine is stopped. Means the longer MDR TB residents include four drugs, all three group, that is uh, group A residents, that is all three drugs in the group A, that is LLB plus one group B as in cyclosidine or cyclosidine should be included uh, for at least 20 to 20 years. These three agents should be included and for the rest of the treatment after the lacrimine is stopped. If only one or two group A agents are included because of the resistance, group B, both the group B agents, that is cyclosidine and cyclosidine are also added. And if only one group A and one group B drug are allowed, then we have to add group C agents also. So, shorter MDR regimen for uh, reforms and resistances, duration is 9 to 11 months. And they're included in pulmonary and extra pulmonary cases, particularly in plural occlusion and lymphomas. Exclusion criteria for the MD, shorter MDR is second line drug resistance, pregnancy, and extra pulmonary cases other than plural occlusion and the lymphoma. The H mono resistant TB. In certain cases, where in Cleveland we have been seeing reformsive uh, sensitivity, there is no different reformsive resistance. Then we go for LPA along with first line treatment. This LPA will suggest sinus resistance. If sinus resistance is present, then we have to go for H monopoly DRTB. We have to say H monopoly DRTB and we have to go for replacement of INS from EHRZ. We we'll start with EHRZ initially when there is Fibonat is positive with no resistance for the FMC. But once we know that INS is resistant, then we have to replace INS with ribofloxacin. And this ribofloxacin, ribofloxacin, INS, and tamrotal and parazinamide should be continued for all six months. So there will be no intensive and uh, continuous phase in this case. We have to continue parazinamide as well for six months. Next. So these are the basic uh, standard resumes that are used. For H monopoly regimen, we have to six months of levoproxamine, rifamcine, ethanbital, and pyrogamide. For MDR or RRPB, moxiflox, canamycin, or mcasin, or ethanamide, trefazamine, pyrogamide, INH, and ethanbital for four to six months, followed by moxifloxacin, so trefazamide, pyrogamide, and ethanbital for five months. For all oral drugs, for all oral residents, it will be 18 to 20 months duration with vidaclin for only 6 months, levofloxin, linozolide, clefosamine and cyclosamine for 18 to 20 months. Extensive tuberculosis, extensive drug resistant tuberculosis, XDRTB, the drugs, uh, choice of drugs will be based on the DST and rapid, rapid test F, uh, first, first line LPA and second line LPA and accordingly we have to start the MDR regimen. Initial six to eight months of treatment is called first phase, and the remaining phase is called second phase. But there is no, it is not intensive or continuation. It is the first phase and second phase. First six to eight months, later remaining is 12 months. So that is how we have to treat the tuberculosis. So in short, tuberculosis, primary tuberculosis has primary TB, that is a plural focus. Bones focus is upper part of the lobe or lower part of the middle lobe on right side. It is self limiting. Lymph node enlargement will be present. No cavity formation or fibrosis, and calcification may occur on healing. In progressive tuberculosis, in immune deficiency state, it occurs in immune deficient states, may form a cavity, and spread will be there to other organs. Post primary TB, it is due to endogenous reactivation of the omnipotent layer. It occurs in the apical segments of upper lobes bilaterally with no lymph nodes, and destruction of form, destructive form of tuberculosis, and this is caseation fibrosis, caseicatization occurs in this case. There will be multiple cavities, the lesions heal with fibrosis causing permanent destruction of the lung tissue. Test of diagnosis TB is microscopic demonstration of AFB or CN CBNAD. Monto test, it is useful in diagnosing latent infection. And in smear negative, highly suspicious cases, and false positive occurs 
in PCC vaccinated cases and false negative are present in the compromised cases. So it is not of much help. ICR is done in low instance in countries to detect latent cases. Early diagnosis. Early diagnosis and complete treatment uh, may prevent the CPLA and treatment of TB is major cause of health authorities as it needs a long duration of people and long duration and people cannot be adherent to the treatment. Irregular and incomplete treatment resulting in destruction of lungs and people becoming permanently morbid. These people with CPLA of TB need no ATT unless they show any active disease demonstrated by presence of DASLA in total. So this is the closure for treatment of TB. Presumptive TB that is vulnerable populations of pediatric age group, extra permanent tuberculosis, people living with HIV, smear negative tuberculosis with X-ray positivity or all positive tuberculosis cases, we have to send the specimen for CBNAT. Once the CBNAT uh, is uh, showing the glucamsin resistance, we'll go for short term MDR resumen. Once the uh, reformation sensitivity is there, we go for first hand treatment. Two HRZ, EHRZ, plus HRV. And uh, patient's totem is sent for first hand NPA. And if it shows NS sensitivity, the same treatment can be continued. If its, it's resistance is there, we will replace the drug um, INH2 with the lipofloxacin. Then Reforms in resistant cases will start with shorter MDR TB resume for 9 to 11 months. Along with that, we have to go for LPA, second line MPA, to see any quinoline resistance. And then, accordingly, if there is no quinoline resistance, we can continue with the same treatment of uh, shorter uh, MDR TB resume. And uh, if there is any resistance, we will new MDR resume will be formed. This is how we have to follow the treatment of. TB can be treated can be effectively. Can be Thank you. Thank you. Just to put it in the middle. Just to put it in.